Good afternoon. Can you hear me good? Uh, let me start with a confession. My name is Fell, and I'm a plastic addict. And let's be honest, I think everybody in this room probably have the same addiction, because we, I think we all have become addicted to this fantastic material. It's easy, it's cheap, it's convenient, and the grab-and-go lifestyle we're living makes it happen. But now we know what the damage of this addiction and this misuse of this fantastic material can cause, and we need to change. So I'm just going to remind us and remind ourselves a few straight facts about plastic. Why is change so essential? Well, there's been a lot of talk about the plastic tax uh, of 5p in this country. Um, and then we've introduced the bag of life. Actually, now we're using more plastic. Most households in the UK have up to 44 bags of life in their, in their houses. Um, and we're sort of hiding behind the smoke screen. In the same way, 60 countries this year has banned the plastic bag. So we need quicker leaderships. And nobody's looking at this, this bit. We are using two million bags a minute. I mean, that is just a madness. And more companies are talking about recycle is the answer. And it can never be. Plastic is a material that's been created not to be infinitely uh, recycled, unlike aluminium and glass that can become another bottle or another can. Plastic is ever, only ever downcycled, and there's a little value in it. It's actually cheaper to produce um, a new plastic bottle than actually putting anything recycled in it. And it's rarely recycled once, maybe even twice, rarely even more. Uh, we will never recycle our way out of this massive problem because we're using the wrong material for the wrong purpose in the first place. So this number usually gets a lot of controversy because 91% um, of plastic is only used one. Actually, this year's uh, word is single use. I think we've been talking a lot about single use. Um, but what is single use? Is it this pen? Is it this computer? What, who defines single use? We've been looking at straws and, and uh, bottles, but actually most of our plastic has only been um, produced or used to be used once. And um, in the UK, we are only recycling 9% of this, of our recycling. So 9%, the rest, where does it go? Where does it go? Well, if you line up all the plastic bottles that was ever made in 2017, it reaches half the way to the sun. We are using more plastic than ever. Actually, this year, plastic production is up. I mean, this has been the year of Blue Planet 2 and much more awareness, but is it slowing down? No, it's not. And it's everywhere. It's not just in our oceans. It's in our air. It's in our soil. It's in our water. It's, every, it's in, in us. So earlier this year, this report came out. And it's done by the Environmental um, uh, Center for Inter International Law. And this is a 50-page document that actually shows at the beginning 
of plastics life cycle to the end, how damaging it is from us, for us and for our environment. And um, this, is, this is sort of our smoking of our generation, um, plastic. And I think people are getting more, getting more aware about it, but not enough. We know now it's especially dangerous for pregnant moms and newborns. It is the, it's a toxin to human health. So if any of you are ever interested, you should really have a read in this report. Um, so where's our plastic waste ending up? Earlier this year, um, we, uh, they was exposed that our plastic waste, our recycled, is ending up to Indonesia, Malaysia, and even worse, we're exporting to places like Myanmar and Mozambique, who has absolutely no waste infrastructure. This I get all the time. We have to be careful to change out the plastic of the unintended consequences. Um, we hear these words all the time when we go in and talk to businesses. Um, but I actually think if you are a business and you are using plastic, you are actually, is, is an intended consequence that we now know what plastic does to our environment and to our health. Um, so is this the wake up call the world needed? I mean, we hear about it in the press. Our children are coming home from school and saying, we need to change. But it's all noise it's actually not slowing down. We couldn't be more wrong. Um, it's threefold increased by 2030 and fivefold by 2050. Where is all this plastic going to go? I'm sorry about this. I'm sorry about this, this slide, but this is what we do every day. You go on a plane, you pop into a shop, you grab a takeaway, and look at the amount of plastic that you are freely given. Remember, the plastic production forecast is fivefold by 2050. It's currently 8% of the oil production, and it's forecast to rise up to 20. Plus, there's new cheap plastic being made possible through cheap fracking. It's getting worse every single day, and we have to act faster. So, oh, hang on a second. So, where do we start? We need to reduce the plastic that we use. And the first thing we have to tackle is the misuse of plastic in our food and drink. Used for one moment and existing for centuries. So, two years ago, I founded A Plastic Planet with my co-founder, Sean Sutherland. Uh, we founded a different kind of movement. It wasn't, we want, didn't want to make another NGO, another ocean-focused fo charity. There's already amazing people who are doing this. No, we are two entrepreneurs, two unreasonable women, who want to use our skill to ignite and inspire the world to turn off the plastic tap. Um, because we can't keep talking about recycling. So we are, at A Plastic Planet, we focus, turn off the tap, in specifically in food and drink. So our first campaign was launched two years ago, and it was all about just asking for the choice, asking for the consumer, because we come from a point of the view of a consumer. We want choice. We want the choice to be buying plastic free. So, we went to our supermarkets, which was a really interesting thing when you were just sort of starting on, on from one day to the other. And we said, hey, you've got 40 aisles, give us one. Because you've given one to fat-free, you've given one to gluten-free, why can't you give us an aisle to plastic-free? And um, they said, just stay in the cafe, will you? and we'll bring in the sustainability director to talk to you. So after seven months, 
a man called Eric Doze from um, the Netherlands, who had 84 supermarket chains, gave us the world's first plastic-free aisles. It was a crazy day in a very cold winter's February, where we suddenly realized the world had woken up to say, this is what we want. We did 55 interviews in one day, and there was a sort of symbol about shoppers wants change to happen, and this is, can actually happen today, not in 25 years' time. So here's a little film about what a plastic planet had been doing in the last 18 months. We have a simple goal to ignite and inspire the world to turn off the plastic tap. Talk about that now with uh, Sean Sutherland. The campaigner behind the idea, Sean. Sutherland Group, a plastic planet. When did it become okay to wrap something as perishable as food in something as indestructible as plastic? So it is very hard if you want to change your habits and you go to the supermarket and you push your trolley and you're trying to put your meat and your fish and your weekly groceries in and everything is wrapped in plastic. So you end up taking this shed load of plastic home, you put it in your bin, you have no idea if it's actually going to be recycled properly. Mm. So our campaign is super simple. We want supermarkets to create a plastic-free aisle. Prime Minister has urged supermarkets to introduce those aisles where shoppers can buy products with no plastic packaging. Supermarkets also need to do much more to cut down on unnecessary plastic package packaging. So we will work with them. The Plastic Free Trust Mark cuts through the confusion of symbols and labels and tells you just one thing. This package is plastic free. You can now buy wheat free, gluten free, fat free, all of these things, but you can't buy plastic free. It's more than a mark. It's a symbol. It's a revolution for choice. Finally, shoppers can be part of the solution. One plastic free day is just one day. It's the one day a year, just 24 hours where you think twice before you reach for that plastic wrap sandwich, that drink with a straw, that plastic bottle of water. My name is Sean. My name is Federico. My name is Lynn. My name is John. My name is 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 And I'm a plastic addict but I am ready for change. So let's turn off the plastic tap together. We have way more power than we think. So how can we accelerate this pace of change? Yes, we need the government. We need taxation. But we need as well to ignite business within. We need open source knowledge of the old these new materials. We need to give consumers the choice on the shelf. And we need to elevate sustainability into a luxury. It's the, you know, it, 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 all this doesn't have to be all this hippy dippy. It has to be, you know, luxury has got to be beautiful, but sustainable and maybe less. So, how have we done this at a plastic planet? Well, in spring, we created, we're trying to create new plastic laws. We, um, we had a, a cross-party of 40 MPs signing up to this to stop us actually exporting our plastic waste to developing countries. We need to deal with waste at home so we know what we have and we can actually build a proper waste management system. We have... Um, we did our first hackathon at Unilever. Unilever is a very interesting um, company. You know, they sell 46 billion single-use uh, plastic sachets to mostly developing countries. So we did a hackathon with uh, Unilever, and we actually brought 100 people together. Um, and you know, the good news, what came out of it, we're actually trialing a plastic-free alternative 
this year in the Philippines. We have been working with businesses within as well in the sense of rethinking how we're going to live, how we're going to make, how we're going to sell, and how we're going to reuse. And later on, Ian's going to take you to, through the whole loop, uh, idea of loop. Um, just thinking about a world with less waste. You actually buy what you need, and when you don't need it, you will subscribe or it'll be sell, sent back. You don't have waste. Um, at A Plastic Planet, we believe that we need open source for um, materials and new materials coming up. That's why we're about to launch the world's first plastic-free library, uh, where the knowledge of these materials will be uh, open to the public and to designers, um, which is a really exciting thing later on this year. Um, because every designer and every brand owner needs more information. It's all a little bit like, who do you know? Will that work? We need to have open source so we can make this change happen faster. So after Holland, we decided to actually have something happening at home. So we have started um, a sort of, an, we call it an open lab. It's up in North London. It's at Budgeons. And there we've been cutting out plastic. We took uh, up to nearly, we're up to 2,000 products or items now that is plastic free. It's about cutting out plastic uh, in the supermarket and giving people this, this choice. And you know, the best news is actually this business is up 4%. You know, show me a high street grocer that can report that on brick and mortar sales. Uh, it's just one, actually, the Green Grocer Gold uh, a couple of weeks ago. So we're really proud of that. Um, but we need to give people the visibility when they buy. That's why we have created this consumer trust mark called Plastic Free. It sits in front of pack um, on brands so the consumers knows when they shop this is plastic free. Um, another one we've done is actually the business commitment mark, which is for business. We can't all be plastic saints right away. You know, you can't, you know, you have to take companies, and you all probably know this, you have to take companies on this journey. So working towards plastic free um, has just been launched with Soho House, which is the, the hotel group worldwide. And we are looking at uh, more businesses to actually adapt this mark, uh, because it's a mark of intention, uh, intention for change. Uh, the Dyline Awards were just uh, in the US. I don't know if any of you know about Dyline. It's um, one of the most, for designers, most aspirational award to get. And we have uh, made a new category in there called Plastic Free. Uh, and we have had the first um, winners in that, which was happened in June. Um, I think the old way of consumer consumption is actually dead. Take and make waste and re and re, re downcycle. It, this is a model. This model is actually history. So yesterday and today. How fast has this happened? It is, it's happened so fast that I, I didn't, you know, we never, we thought it was going to take 10 years and it's actually in the last six months, businesses are actually coming, um, coming together. Uh, we have a new language for plastic and it's coming like a jackanaut. Responsibility is absolutely going to be the change maker for, um, for the industries, especially the plastic industry. So I am going to pass you on to Ian, and he's going to tell us about what business and brands can do and how they can lead this change. 
because it is surely by bad design that got us into this mess, and it's good design that's going to get us out of it. We, I believe we can do this, but we've got to really show leadership, and we've got to move fast, because we don't have that long. So on a positive, upbeat note is we can all do this together. Thank you very much.